Well, hey guys, this is Jill Williams. Welcome to my channel. I have got some interesting things to share with you, including some Daniel Smith colors. So I picked up this little set just recently that features several, if not all, of Daniel Smith's Primatech colors. And they're just little samples all included in here. There are little cards inside. And I'm gonna do a series of videos where I go through the whole box to show you exactly what these colors look like and how they behave and also introduce you to my method for creating a sample card so that you can really test your colors, put them to the test to see exactly what they're going to do. So let's get started. Okay, so I've turned over to my uh, work area and let me just kind of show you what I've got here. So this is the little box that I picked up and it does say Mineral Marvels on the outside but when you flip it over to the back and read, you understand that they're showing you samples of their, uh, their Primatech colors. So I'm just gonna open this up just to let you see what's inside the whole box, but I'll be doing several videos to cover all of the colors. Uh, you get a, a beautiful little sample of just uh, all the colors that are included, you know, just with little color swatches and some information. And then there are nine little cards here that are sort of divided into, you know, by theme according to color. So I thought this was interesting. You've got um, oceanic uh, metamorphic black, which shows you several black colors, uh, blue beauties, and so on. Uh, so you get the idea there's a little theme involved. But each card, there are nine of them, they present you with four different pigments and I'm going to walk you through this first one uh, today, and we'll do all of these in separate videos. So the oceanic colors are the Mayan Blue Genuine, the Kingman Green Turquoise, the um, Deopside Genuine, and then Green Appetite Genuine. And if you flip this over on the back, you know, there's, these are pretty generous samples as well. Uh, if you flip it over onto the back, there's a little blurb on each one that describes to you uh, a little bit about the color and where it comes from. So that's pretty interesting uh, as well. So let's get into this whole idea of creating a sample card. Okay, so let's look at first what I've got here on my board. Um, I've actually taken, these are sort of um, 1 16th size sheets. They're uh, from a full sheet of Arches 140 pound paper and I've torn them down to, they're roughly like a five and a half by seven and a half. You could do your sample card on one whole sheet this size. In fact, that this one is pretty similar to that. Um, I'm, for the demonstration, I'm just gonna do some smaller ones. So I'm taking the, the 1 16th sheet and I've actually taped it down to the board here and actually, you know, subdivided this, you know, uh, to make two pieces. So two of these sheets are actually gonna yield four different samples for me, which is perfect for our demo today. We've all sort of, you know, had an opportunity to just make little color swatches. And in fact, they look much like what we see here in the booklet. And this can present you with some decent color information, but if you really wanna push a color, I suggest using uh, a larger sheet to create a sample card where you have sort of tested the color in a variety of different things. Uh, this happens to be a Daniel Smith uh, color here called Transparent Gold. And I've used the color and you know put it across the paper and you know added water in different um, configurations. I've added salt, I've did some brushwork, I've done uh, you know some different water techniques just to kind of test the color for its uh, for its clarity, also for its absorption. Uh, I test it for the way it re you know how it's reactive to salt, and also I'm interested to know about the dispersion. In other words, how how the color flows and moves when it comes into contact with water. Um, some of them you know will really move a lot. Some of them don't move that much at all. So I want to really know how the color, not just what the color looks like, but I want to know how the color behaves. And I'm going to show you that today with these sample cards uh, using these four colors in the Oceanic series. So let's get to that. You're going to need your brushes, your water, and I'm using some uh, just plain table salt. And I've also got a spray bottle because I just, these are techniques that I use often and I just want to kind of push these colors and see exactly what they're going to do. So to get started with my card, I'm actually going to just uh, spritz each of these just a little bit to kind of activate them and let those kind of start, 
you know, moving around and softening up just a little bit so that I can really get into those colors. You want to make sure that you've got plenty of water to work with. And I know it's annoying, but make sure you've got some clear water with every single color or else you're going to kind of lose exactly what's going on with, with that particular color. All right, so I'm just going to do them in order as they appear on this little sheet. I'll hold it up so that you can see what we've got going on here. We've got the, the Mayan blue, the, uh, the Kingman green, the, let's see, yeah, the Diopside genuine and green Appetite genuine, okay? All right, so let's start with the, uh, the Mayan blue. Uh, all of these are, you know, they're calling it the Oceanic series, which I think is kind of nice. So definitely got some ocean colors here. And let's see what we've got. I always start with a larger brush and I just, I wet the top of my panel. I want to see what the color is going to look like when I've loaded my brush up. Uh, and these cards are, you know, they're kind of small, so I'm just making sure to work the color toward the corner so that I don't uh, pollute each of these colors with one another. So I'm just really loading my brush up here. I want to see what's going to happen here. So, in fact, let's zoom in on each one of these colors as we do them. You can see the water that I put across and I've got a really nice saturation of color. So I kind of just want to bring it up to the water just to see what it's going to do. And I notice right away that, you know, this pigment doesn't really take off into the water. When I bring it up, I can, it kind of has a little bit of movement. You can see it's got, it's sort of slow to move, but it is, it is kind of uh, moving a little bit slow. That just lets me know that's another uh, helpful thing to know uh, as far as the behavior of this pigment, that it's, you know, it's not going to disperse very quickly, but it does have a beautiful color. All right, so I'm loading up my brush even more. I'll just get the little card over here. I wanna load up my brush even more. I want to see what this color, I'm leaving a little gap here. I wanna see what this color looks like full strength. It's really beautiful. All of these, you know, all these mineral colors, they're going to give me a nice granulation. And that's one of the things I love so much about Daniel Smith Primatech colors, especially they really have that beautiful granulation. Um, it is very transparent. And I'm cleaning out my brush completely. And now I'm going to start at the bottom with a little bit of water and let this come up and meet the color to watch what happens. It's, it's interesting if you paint with watercolor long enough, bringing water to a color, it behaves a little bit differently than when you start with water and bring the color to the water, okay? I really kind of want to know uh, how, they, how, they, how they do. They're very similar. I'm going to take a little bit of salt now. Let me zoom out just a little bit so we can see the whole. Okay, I want to take my salt and I'm just going to kind of sprinkle a little bit right here on the bottom. And I'm going to take a little rigger brush. This is just one of my small brushes, a little tiny number zero rigger. And I want to just, I've just got it wet with water. I'm going to kind of come into my painting here or into my sample and just make some physical marks. Uh, I like to see how the pigment behaves when I introduce some water into it and kind of produce some movement. This gives me a chance to pull pigment up and away so that I can see how much lifting occurs. And it also lets me drag the pigment through and across into a lighter area just so that I can see how much of the pigment is going to move. And it also gives me a chance, you know, as a landscape painter, I kind of like to see how these little strands uh, are going to look in a particular pigment and how the, you know, how the pigment is floating in the water because these can communicate different sort of natural features, whether it's grasses or limbs or anything like that, I kind of want to see what it's going to look like in this, you know, with this particular pigment. All right, so I put the salt in here. Let's see, I kind of painted over it a little bit. And I'm going to put the, put the salt in here and I'm just going to let it sit. I just want to see what it's going to do. I'm also going to take a little bit of the pigment. I'm using a smaller brush. I want to drop some of the pigment back into some of my wet areas. It's almost like I'm 
I guess if you wanted to think about it, it's kind of like making a little miniature painting with just one color, just to kind of see how it behaves. And it's also, it almost feels a little bit like play. Might be a little bit noisy. It's a beautiful day today, and if you don't know, I live in uh, my bus full time, and so I've just got the window open, so I might hear a little traffic in the little park today. So much fun. Okay, this is much more exciting uh, way to make a, a little color swatch than to just sort of smear the paint around. This really gives me some information about how the water, how, about how the pigment is going to behave. Okay, I can even come in and spritz a little, give a few spots right on top. And then I'm just going to let that go. Okay, so we're gonna come back to that, let it dry completely on its own because I wanna see what the salt does. I wanna see what the water does. Uh, and I don't want to sort of prematurely, um, you know, get these dry before I see what the effects are going to be. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing with each of these colors uh, in the last three blocks that I have left. And then we'll come back and see how they all turn out. Make sure you're starting with clean water and a clean brush before you get into the next one. And I'm just going to use the same pattern that I did before. All right, getting into this Kingman green. Lots of dispersion there. Very transparent, beautiful color, lots of granulation. Fantastic. All right, I'm gonna get uh, my brush wet here a little bit. I want to really give as deep a value as I can with this, just to see what it's gonna do. I'm skipping down just so that I can get this right on dry paper. Oops, I might have touched that a little bit. Um, it is a very transparent color, but absolutely gorgeous. I can see how valuable this color would be in working, in painting water, especially very active water. It's got some nice dispersion and that beautiful emerald color. Okay, again, I'm gonna bring some water in on dry paper and come and meet this color. Lots of really nice dispersion. Either way, the dispersion is different. It behaves a little bit differently depending on, you know, the direction that, you, that you're working in. All right, my little, my little uh, rigger brush. I kind of want to just drop some water in here and see how that's going to behave. Very much like the, the first round that I did. And I also want to put a little bit of salt in here. See how that's going to behave. And then maybe a little spritz of water. Okay. All right, let's clean the brush out and see what we've got for the next one. Okay, so clean water again, uh, dioxide genuine. Let's take a look and see what we've got. I'm wetting my paper. Oh, it's a very vibrant green. Makes me think of a, uh, almost like a phthalo green. It's really warm, really, really warm. Let's see what's gonna happen here. Beautiful color. doesn't move a whole lot. You know, if you know that a color is not going to move a whole lot, um, that lets you kind of understand its behavior a little bit more and you can work with it, you know, bringing other, bringing it next to another color uh, that maybe uh, that you want to get it close to and you don't have to worry so much about what's going to happen, that they're not going to overrun one, one another. Uh, it's got some medium, you know, it's sort of a I need to look at it to, for sure to make sure that it's uh, transparent or semi-transparent, but um, it does have some nice coverage. Very beautiful color. It almost looks, you know, it's got this emerald color. It makes me think of uh, mixing phthalo green and Hansa yellow together is, is kind of what it makes me think of, but with this nice granulation. All right, bringing some water up to the bottom side. 
just to see how it will behave. A little bit more dispersion that way. Uh, I noticed that this makes me think of the cascade green a little bit. Uh, I've got some, some, you know, the the secondary. There's two different colors kind of happening, and I've got a a lighter green sort of um, sneaking out from under here. Uh, different types of um, gradients that can happen depending on whether or not the pigment is delivered to a wet area or whether water is delivered to a pigmented area. It's always fun to kind of play with that and make sure what you're kind of dealing with there. Uh, some more little streaks. Let's see what happens. I like the displacement that happens with this. If you notice when I put the water in it immediately pushes the other, um, you know, this color away. You can see it just growing. It just really, that's a very nice feature and a fun one, especially with a dark color, because it's very fun to be able to drop water in and then you've got light areas without having to lift. Fantastic. You know, if I know how the pigment is going to behave, then that lets me know exactly, you know, how I might want to try to use it. Um, it lets me, it really informs my decision making when I go into the process of experimenting further with actually incorporating it into a painting. I've already got some knowledge of the pigment, you know, that's, I talk to my students about this all the time. You want to develop a relationship with your pigments. You want to understand what they do, not just what they look like, but how they behave. All right, so I'm getting some more of this. Um, and just dropping it in just to see how it'll behave. I'm interested to know if I can do some back painting or some negative painting into these areas where I've already pushed the water away and, and, and the color stay in place and it looks pretty stable. I'm really liking that idea. See how much I can learn about this color uh, by playing with it and experimenting and even bringing the color itself over the top. Okay, let's, let's kind of let that one sit and see what it's going to do. One more color here on this card. This is the Green Appetite Genuine. This is a color that I'm already familiar with. I actually, I have it on my palette and really enjoy it. It's super fun. I kind of, you know, I already know what to expect with this, but I want to show you Let's get into it. I'm going to put the uh, clear water up the top. And this is a beautiful, warm, you know, it's a warm green, but it's got some beautiful granulation and secondary color that sort of shows up. So I'm going to bring this in here. The dispersion is just phenomenal. Look at that yellowish, you know, the lighter yellowish tone really taking off. Oh, it's just such a gorgeous color. Now this one will have, you'll begin to see it. I'm going to show it to you in just a little bit. There are dark flecks um, in this pigment that, you know, they're heavy and so they're going to sit down into the pores of the paper, into the little pits of the paper. Uh, again, I'm going to skip and you can see we can get some really pretty good saturation here. It's it's a very um, mid to dark tone, uh, beautiful coverage, and just lots and lots of just endless, um, you know, granulation. It's just fantastic. All right, you can see the the dispersion at the top has just been phenomenal. Um, it'll perform well for us at the bottom too. So I'm going to bring some clear water in and let it come up and make contact with that area. Lots of movement. I love the difference between, you know, it would seem that they should be so similar and, and they are they are the sim similar, but they're not the same. They It behaves very differently when you bring, you know, pigment to water and when you bring water to pigment. Um, they really do behave differently and it's important to, to know so that you understand what to expect in your own working process here. Um, let's do some little streaks here. Uh, look at that displacement. I just love that. But the little black granules stay in place. Fantastic. Again, this is something I stress to my students all the time. Make sure you're spending time 
you know, building a relationship with your, with your pigments. You don't know if you're only, you know, kind of using a color sometimes or uh, here and there and you don't really, you don't really get to know it. You can't push it to, to its fullest potential. And it's just, it's endless. All the different uh, types of, look at all of the different color variations that I've been able to achieve just out of this one pigment by just, you know, pushing the level, you know, um, uh, pushing the different aspects of it and, and treating it very much like an experiment. I really want to see what it's going to do with different things. I forgot to squirt that one with water. I'll do a little squirt of water there too. All right, so we've got four, four pigments here that you can see just the combination of the four they're absolutely gorgeous together. So I do want to create like a little landscape. We're using all four colors on this just to see how that's going to behave. But this makes it easier for me to do that once I've experimented and I'm able to see what they do. So they're still drying, but look at all of the possibilities with just one pigment at a time. All right, so let's let these dry and see on their own and see how they fully turn out. Okay, here we are with the finished samples after they've had time to dry on their own. I really want them to do that so that I know exactly what they're going to do and uh, how they're gonna respond to the salt and, and the water effects that we've added. But um, I have gone ahead and taken them off the board. Uh, you definitely wanna make sure that you label them correctly so that you can keep up. And just, let's just take a look at these. These are absolutely gorgeous, absolutely uh, fantastic sample cards that really show me so much more about the color and how it behaves. And, you know, other than just a plain swatch of color, you know, when we use the little card, you can see just on the card, you know, these give me just sort of a swatch of color just after I've used them. And that does give me lots of color information, but it really doesn't tell me very much about how the color behaves. So that's why I think it's so important to really go the extra mile to create this type of sample card. And, you know, I went through the different techniques that I often use, which is, you know, various ways of integrating water into the pigment, uh, brushwork that I tend to use, and I do use a good bit of salt in my work. So you need to choose, you know, what really works best for you and use those techniques um, into, you know, working them into the pigment as you create the cards. But the granulation is just fantastic, exactly what you would expect from these beautiful Daniel Smith colors. Uh, look at this green Appetite Genuine, uh, the black, you know, particulates that are in the pigment. They just, they rest on the paper, they're heavy, and then that beautiful green just sort of sneaks out from under. Uh, just incredible response to water and salt. Uh, beautiful colors and you know it just takes a little time to sort of go through these but it really makes so much difference when you understand not only what your colors you know look like you know we do want to know what they look like but it's so important for us to know exactly how they behave um, when when they're on the paper one more thing I will add on this before I get into the other colors Please make sure that you're going the extra mile and doing your sample cards on your good quality paper. You know, I do my sample cards on my Arches 140 pound paper. Um, in fact, still got some paint on me. Um, this is what I paint with and I highly recommend doing that. If you use a lesser paper, then you're not going to get the full result of how the pigment behaves on the paper that you're going to be using and then you're still going to be kind of back to square one when you start working on your good paper your pigments are not going to behave the same so i hope you enjoyed this i want you to give it a try and let's move on to the next color block